Did you have a question on your mind? What's on your mind? Um, praise the Lord. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Pastor, sir, for this opportunity to be part of the Easter Youth Camp. You have transformed my life imminently in every way. My parents are pastors in Kenya. They have their own church. But because of how much impact you've made in my life through your messages, they gave me as a seed to Christ Embassy. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> thank you very yes, much. To Pastor Shijidara. And thank you so much for sending Pastor Shijidara to Kenya. He has transformed my life so much, so much. So my question was, the first question was, there was, a t um, there was a time I was preparing to come to this camp. I was praying a lot, listening to your messages, listening to the word of God, and things were just working out perfectly. Then God pre in my school, I wanted to reach out to some guys. I used to play rugby before, but I stopped. So I wanted to reach out to the rugby team. They didn't accept the messages yet, but when one of them died, I didn't know he had a brain tumor. So... I received the message like 30 minutes, just 30 minutes after he had died. So I, th I was so excited that I was going to go there and raise the dead and all of them were going to give their lives to Christ. But I went there, I felt something pulling, the spirit of death, I think. Then I started praying, I started praying, I spoke in tongues. Then as I was speaking, I wanted to round up the prayers. I remembered from one of your messages saying, keep, keep, keep going on, keep going on, you're winning, you're winning. Then I continued praying, continued praying. Then I heard that I should focus on those that are alive, that I should not um, dwell on what has just happened, but I was sure that he had gone to hell. Should I have, um, what should I have done? Should I have um, commanded his body to receive back his spirit, or what should I have done in that case? Then the second case was two weeks after, my grand uncle, he was 50, 57 years of age. So what happened was um, he was at the ICU because of kidney failure. Um, he, he had dialysis for over seven years now. But when I had that situation, I connected it to the other one. So I went there first. So I preached to him the message of Jesus Christ. Many times it, it, it had been preached to him, but he didn't accept it. But as I preached it to him, it was getting to him, getting to him. Especially, I gave him an example that you gave us, um, our pastor gave us, Pastor Shiji, that there was a man who was 60 years of age, but when he came and listened to you, he wanted to retire, but he went back to business. And by the time he was 65, he had made his first $1 million. So I told him that message, and he was so inspired. And he said he wants to give his life to Christ and to receive the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. So I prayed for him. He, was, he received Christ that moment and the ability to speak in tongues. So the next day I came back with, do you believe in miracles? So he was much better. He was even discharged on that next day. So we took him, we took him home. But when I left him with all those messages, a week later, everything became so bad. The situation was so bad. When they took him to hospital, he died. What, what happened? <laughs> it's interesting asking me what happened in the first case you heard a voice within you telling you to focus on those who are alive you always have to learn to follow that voice inside you so your question was what should you have done and I would say you're supposed to follow that voice that was guiding you inside you. I mentioned yesterday that Satan cannot talk to you inside you. He'll talk from outside you because he doesn't live in you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. And when the Holy Spirit talks to you in your spirit, you, you have to listen to him. He's always right. Yeah. So that will be... Yes, please. Lastly, sir. Yeah. Um, I remember about six months ago, uh, our pastor. Is this pastor... is this another case? Okay. Can I answer the second one? Okay. Yeah. You've you've mentioned two cases, so I just wanted to comment on the first one and the second one. But I, I'm through with the first one. Now, the second one, 
you said what happened yeah um firstly you know when people live their lives they program themselves in a certain direction they condition themselves and this man may have already lived his life in a certain direction now you come with the gospel and preach to him much as he may want to live he would need help to be guided into the word god said my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge now he has just started he's just getting to know the word even though he was almost 60 years old but he has spent most of his life without knowing the lord now he's heard the word in a condition terrible health condition he gets well but he doesn't know what awaits him the challenges of faith see we never neglect that the bible tells us that those who must live godly in christ will suffer what persecution that's gonna happen and some people face persecution and run away they don't want to serve the lord anymore because they weren't expecting persecution then for health when people get healed there can be challenges to your faith but you have to learn to stand your ground but no one taught him he didn't know that and probably the, the next time he felt the symptoms he said to himself oh maybe i wasn't here he was listening to the, the devil so oh maybe maybe i wasn't here or oh fear has come to his heart and then he's unable to make it see when people get healed look at it this way because one of the reasons we are very successful with the healing school is that we continue to follow people up and teach them the word. So you find people who come to testify three years after they've been healed, six years after they've been healed. How did they make it? Because they stayed on the word. See? If you were... Most people were not, were not sick when they were born. All right? So they became sick at a certain period of their lives. Probably from some lifestyle, something went wrong. Or a satanic attack on their lives. And then this sickness came to them. Okay, now we've preached the gospel to them and they are healed. Jesus said, do not go back to sin, lest a worse thing than this comes to you. He said that to a man that he had healed. He said, don't go back to sin, or your condition will be worse. He meant it. So, they have to be taught that now that you are healed, you have to live in God's word. You can't just continue the way you were living before. After all, the way you were living before, Satan had the opportunity to attack you. So if you go back, you are in danger yourself. It could be worse. And such a situation might have happened to the gentleman you were talking about. They always have to be taught. The same way when people give their hearts to Christ, we teach them how to remain in the Lord. Right? And we strengthen them with the word. We encourage them that even if things get difficult, they must know the Lord is with them. And we also stress the importance of having the Holy Spirit. So we minister to them to have the Holy Spirit. And then they are strengthened. That's what you do for the sick as well. When people are healed, they must be taught the word of God. So their healing can remain. All right. What was the last thing you wanted to say? Okay. Mm, so I... There was one time our pastor, Pastor Shiji, was preaching to us and he was telling us that we can make changes instantly in our lives. And he gave us an instance of your 
In the years between 2000 and 2003, there was a lot of persecution against Christ Embassy. And just before um, the healing school began, he told us that you told them that you're going to go away to be with the Lord for some time. But when you come back, things will just open up everywhere. How, how did you know that it was time? And what did you do during that period to ensure that? <laughs> okay, I'll give you... Um... Uh, a different situation that will be much easier to grasp, okay? Years ago, I was leading a youth group. And at a certain period, you know, the members were having different problems, different challenges, different funny behaviors, not very committed, you know, and things weren't going so well. And I was having a lot of trouble getting everybody to move in the right direction. The leaders weren't behaving right either. So things were just, you know, not going so well. So I was praying and asking the Lord, what should I do? I'm trying, but they just seem to be frustrating. You know, when you're, when you're having to follow up someone that should have been following up other people, <laughs> you see, and then he's even making it difficult for you, and then they're asking you stupid questions, you know. <laughs> so this kind of situation was there. So I was praying and asking the Lord, what, what shall I do? Then, in my heart, I had this intuition to take some time to fast and pray. Imagine I'm already praying. I'm already praying for them. I'm already asking the Lord, what do I do? And, and then I'm guided by the Spirit to fast and pray for a few days. Then plus that, I should take the next two weeks praying incessantly and doing this early in the morning and late at night. Just for this. So I set myself to do it. I fasted and prayed. Then I began this uh, uh, guidance that the Lord had given me. I would sneak away to pray early in the morning. Then late at night, I would sneak out to pray. And they'll be looking for me. But I'll just sneak away. So I was doing this every day for two weeks. By the end of two weeks, as I was praying, I'll never forget. Oh, it was in the night. As I was praying, the power of the Spirit of God was so, so stared in me from my head down to my feet, I felt the power of God so strong. Then, I went to the next meeting. I would merely utter a few words. And just while speaking, just a few words, the power was so strong and they were just falling under the power everywhere, screaming and talking to the Lord and asking for forgiveness from God. Everywhere. And then they got so stared themselves and they went back and started inviting others who had stopped coming. The Spirit of God was staring them up, staring them up, staring them up. And before long, Everyone was back a fire for God. See? 
So I learned something. I learned something. What John Wesley said. He said, if the preacher will burn, people will come to see the fire. See? So what the Lord was doing with me there was, okay, now you want something to happen, let's begin with you. (laughs) See, I'm praying for them. But God's saying, if I can do something with you, I can work through you. See? And he got me praying. He got me focused. See, he was concerned about me. He got me praying and got me focused. And once he got my attention, then I was filled with the Spirit. You know, you can be filled again and again with the Spirit. God tells us to do that. This is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, be not drunk with wine wherein there's excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be constantly filled with the Spirit. And then I was ready. And then, few words. Imagine I was talking to someone and trying to persuade and persuade and they are arguing. But now I come and I say, praise God. (gasps) Oh, Jesus, forgive me. They didn't ask for forgiveness all the time. I was trying to let them know they were wrong. (laughs) Now the Holy Ghost is ministering to them. Nobody needs to tell them they were wrong. Hallelujah. So I, I, I emphasize the ministry of the Holy Spirit because that's the key. You want results? Get soaked in the Holy Ghost. Get soaked in the Holy Ghost. You pray. If, if, if you pray one day, no result, add another day to it. If you have to fast and pray, add fasting to it. Or get committed in prayer. Stay focused in prayer. Set your goal. You can, spiritual things are so important. You can't just say, oh, I want this, I want this, and just pray and go away. No, you must press in the spirit. Like that prayer that I was having to do for two weeks. You know, I was pressing, pressing every day. I'm going out to pray. And, you know, I have to sneak away to go and pray. And I pray and pray and pray. Then come back like, you know, then go again. I'm, you know, I was focused for my goal. What did I want? What did I want to see in the lives of the people? So you must press. It's not hard. It's just a discipline. If you want it, you will have it if you give attention to it. That's all you need. Give it attention. You will be shocked what the Lord will do in your life. You know, I told you before, well, I went to preach in a school and they were all laughing, a girl's school. You know what girls can be like? Especially when many of them are not born again. You know, they were laughing and shouting and, you know, just making noise. When I say praise the Lord, they go, <laughs> So, I preached they were excited. I said, okay, how many of you want to give your life to Christ? Oh, everybody. I didn't know whether they were joking with me or they were serious. <laughs> so, I led them in the sinner's prayer for salvation and they prayed after me. Then I said, how many of you would like to receive the Holy Spirit? All their hands went up. It's a long haul. All the hands went up. Then I explained a little bit about the Holy Spirit. Do you now want to receive the Holy Spirit? Yeah! (laughs) So I said, okay, let's pray. So I said, in the name of Jesus, you know, I, I don't pray too much. When I pray to God, I can pray long prayer between me and God, private. But when I pray for people, I don't pray too many long prayers. 
you know. So I said, in the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. I waited. Nothing happened. They shouted, Amen! And they were like looking for something to happen. Nothing happened. Everywhere went quiet again. Then I said, receive the Holy Ghost. Quiet. Amen. Then I said, okay, just talk to the Lord by yourself. I I wanted to distract them so I could talk to God myself. (laughs) I thought I needed some, some instruction now. So I said, okay, pray wherever you are. They made a little noise and I said, Lord, what shall I do now? What shall I do now? Then the Lord said to me real quickly, he said, touch the, the person closest to you. I said, okay. Then I said, are you all ready? They said, yeah. I said, in the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. And I touched the person nearest to me. The whole hall went down. The whole auditorium went down. And those who were standing at the door fled. They were wondering what happened. The power of God moved into the place, surged through the building, and everybody went under the power. And on the ground, they were speaking in tongues. The power of the Holy Spirit was manifested in an amazing way. Speaking in tongues. And you know, many of those people are still in the Lord today. Amazing. Amazing. So I know that our reliance on the Holy Spirit is the most important. What you can't do by yourself the Holy Spirit will help you do. The Holy Spirit. I went to visit someone one day. And um, when I got there, I saw there were about three of them, or four of them, three of them not behaving nicely. There was another Christian there. So one of them was really disturbing trying to distract the others from listening to what this brother was sharing. Then I turned to the lady and I said, if you ever meet Jesus, your knees will buckle. She said, what's that? I said, you're doing what you're doing because you don't know him. So she was looking at me like up and down, up and down. But I stood there just staring at her. Suddenly the power of God went through her. She screamed and fell under the power, asking for forgiveness. That was how we settled the matter. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Always be conscious that the Holy Spirit is in you. Always be conscious. What you can't do, He can do. And He can do better. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Talk to the Lord and thank Him. Hallelujah. Mando ko pra kasele greda angradila groska praktala angradias. Jola ramanto cabro dos ke zola brega angradila la costa la mangradis. Jo sa caramantiga angradios. Lora gadila cranta sacadeha de ombra de la gatacades. Gelaranto kiro patarades. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We honor you. Glory to your name forever. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for your children today. Thank you for your mighty hand upon them. Thank you for your blessings in their lives. 
They're growing stronger and stronger. Stronger and stronger. Filled with the Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I bless them with your word. I bless them with your grace. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thanks for sharing with us. Thank you. God bless you. Are you young? Are you influencing your world? Would you like to know what other young people are doing in their world? Then follow the Global Youth Leaders Forum Super User on King's Chat and see impact reports of young people just like you. If you are making an impact and you need the right platform to be heard, the GYLF Super User is just right for you. See latest news updates of GYLF impacts around the world and upcoming events of the forum. You can share reports of the impact you are making in your nation, testimonies of those you have impacted, and you can interact with other young people and learn how they do what they do. Follow us today. Follow us on the GYLF Super User. Download the King's Chat app on the Android Play Store or Apple App Store. In the search box, type Global Youth Leaders Forum. Tap on the Super Users tab. Select Global Youth Leaders Forum from the search result and tap follow at the top right corner. Subscribe to notifications to receive updates. To become a member of the GYLF, please visit our website at www.globalyouthleadersforum.org. Click on the Join Now button, fill in the required information, and that's it. The Global Youth Leaders Forum, raising leaders, building the future.